Okay, so the uh, the second video I'm going to post um, after the random number generator that we just worked through is I'm going to post a video on doing some simple uh, some simple binary conversion. I know that you'll, you'll have a homework assignment that'll be similar to this also. Um, I'm not going to do all the digits for you, but I but I will I will at least get you started here. Um, so let's and this is again out of your design homework uh, for the LabVIEW book there. And we'll put my name in here, and we'll put the project. We'll do a binary conversion. I believe that's what's similar to what the homework's going to be there. Uh, the revision is going to be 001, and the date is going to be uh, 1 slash 31 slash 2013. All right, so our, our binary conversion, one of the things that they wanted you to do with that binary conversion is come up with a slider over on your front panel. So I'm going to right click on my front panel and I'm going to put in a, uh, 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 what am I going to do? Let's see, put in a numeric control of some, some point. Uh, so vertical fill slide, I kind of like that. You know, I don't like that. It doesn't have a knob on it or anything. Let me go back in here. Numeric. Oh, I like this one. Pointer slide. This one I like because I can actually see, you know, I see where to grab on it. And you can make this thing bigger. And again, for the homework, I'm not sure what, uh, not positive off the top of my head what the, what the range was going to be. But for, for this particular demo, I'm going to make it really small. I'm going to make it, I'm not even going to go above, uh, I'll go to four is all I'm going to do. So I'm going to right click on this. Go to properties and I know for the homework they go over four so you'll have to do a little bit more math than what I'm going to show you in here um, but uh, but we'll, we'll get this thing running so I'm going to go from zero to four okay and uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on here and I'm going to do represent this as um, integers so I'm going to go to I8 which allows us to go all up a ton but in this case because we only go to four on the scale we'll only go to four all right um, so now you see as soon as I change that to I8 I get the blue color because we're no longer dealing with any floating point math so this is going to be my numeric my numeric and then I want to represent uh, the number zero one two three four in binary so what I would do is I would add over here maybe some square LEDs maybe I'd resize these a little bit you know, and I would call this my ones. I would grab another one, shift it over there, shift it over there. This is where you can use some of those neat tools again that we talked about. You know, if you want to use your uh, your uh, alignment and distribution tools, you know, if you get something that looks kind of messy like that. Uh, let me relabel these first though. Twos, and we'll call these fours because when we count in binary, uh, base two. We have ones, twos, fours, eights, sixteens, and so on. Um, but one of the things about LabVIEW is we want to keep our real estate looking nice. So I'm going to draw a box around all of these, and I'm going to go to uh, Alignment by Top Edges, and then I'm going to go to Distribute and distribute them horizontally by centers. Um, now they're nice and lined up, uh, clean, and what I'll call this is the binary representation. Okay, of those of those numbers over there and you can do those same things that we just did you can also do over here with your alignment tools you know you could come over here and and go around this and you could do a uh, alignment by left edges and uh, uh, distribute evenly by top edges and you end up with a nice little tool there all right and then at that point um, we're gonna actually we'll put this uh, the previous one I did in a uh, a for loop this one I'll put in a while loop so I'm gonna go into structures and I'm gonna put this into a while loop and then when you're in a while loop unlike the for loop you still can count the number of iterations here but unlike the for loop where you have a number of iterations up here the while loops gonna run until someone hits stop Now you can also change the looping condition you can also say continue if true or stop if true uh, so if I want to put a stop button on it what I'm gonna do is right click in here and I'm going to go into, uh, I got to find my little stop button here. Let's see where that is. Sometimes I forget where these things are myself. Uh, OK. 
Okay. Oh, you know what? You know, you know, actually, I do know where it is. We're going to put it on the front panel because you're not going to be stopping it from the block diagram, so we got to be careful here. So we'll go into the front panel, and in here we'll go into uh, the Boolean because it's a button that's either on or off, and we'll grab the stop button. Okay, so this would be the way that I would stop my stop my VI with the stop button here. Okay, um, notice that stop button is going to come in, and then I can just look to see if it's true, and that'll kick me out of this loop, and it'll kick me out of the program. So I don't have to use run continuously anymore. Now we are controlling how many times this thing's going to loop for. Um, at this point, all we need to do is some simple math. You know, we can come in here and take that number, go to numeric and remainder quotient. We take that number in and we're going to divide it by two because we are base two. Okay. And then the, uh, the integer is going to be your ones place. The remainder is going to go down and we're going to do some more math on it. Oh, and, and I will have to fix one thing here, I can tell you that. Uh, so one of the things that you notice here is we do have an error right now. Uh, anytime you're connecting two different color wires, you know that you have a problem. So in this case, um, what, all we're doing is we're going to say, well, the new number coming in, if it's, if it's, uh, if it's, uh, Uh, if it's a one, I, I'm actually got to rewire these here for a second here, so you're not looking at this. So it, let's say if the number coming in is a one, the integer coming out is a zero, and that gets passed on. But the remainder is a one. Um, therefore, the one is what we want to wire into here. That's how we do a, a simple binary conversion like this. However, what we all we got to do is ask is say, is it equal to one? So you can come in here, and uh, uh, let's see. Well, we could do a couple of things here. We could go to uh, comparison. Uh, can we do equal? Yeah, we can do an equal. Bring in our numeric for the remainder and ask ourselves, is it equal to 1? Okay. And if it is, the result is yes or no, true or false. We're up and running. The, the, uh, the, uh, the integer portion, though, however, goes down here. So we're dividing 2 by 2. So in the case, uh, you know, if, if 2 coming in divided by 2, I don't get a remainder. Um, the reason why is I should be going up to the 2's place. So now I'm going to divide that result of the integer by 2 again. Okay. And you might get, get the idea of how this kind of chains together here. You know, we'll come down here and we'll divide by 2 one more time. Create constant. Divide by 2 one more time. And here's the goofy thing. If you... Uh, uh, that's kind of a neat thing there. If you if you create it first, it's gonna it's gonna think, oh, well, you're dealing with numeric because that's what I default to. Um, but rather, if you if you come in here and you uh, you bring it in and you wire up your integer first, it'll make this a an integer calculation, uh, which in our case, uh, ooh, which in our case might not be the best. Uh, no, I guess we're okay because we're dividing by twos and our, our remainders are one. Three divided by two is one remainder one. Zero divide, or one divided by two is zero remainder one. We, sh we should be okay on this. Um, so then my remainders are going to come out. And I'm just going to ask in all cases, I'm going to ask are they, are they equal? Are they equal to one? Um, and, that, and that should take care of me on that. So I got to create a constant on this one and make it a one. And again, if I, if I wire up first, um, these will actually show up as as integer nodes, and I can also remember you can also do the uh, you can do the representation too and change the representation of the whole thing. Uh, so create a constant of one, remainder, create a constant of one, and let's see what happens here. You know we're kind of doing this off the cuff, uh, and we'll see if this works or not. So what we're going and I'm going to put some comments right in this block. Uh, convert sliding integer scale to binary base 2 and if we go to run and we have an error right now so this is kind of interesting we'll, we'll see what our error is here so I go to error it says quotient remainder contains a bad or unwired terminal uh, and it actually is is right here 
So let's see here. Let's see. Actually, I don't even have to. Uh, I don't even have to do a quotient remainder because I'm I'm ending at that block. So I'm just going to ask, is that equal to one? Um, if you're using the quotient remainder, you have to use all the terminals. You can't uh, just randomly use terminals. And now if I go to run, what you're going to see is when I'm on zero, I get zero. If I go to one, I get ones. Two, I get twos. Three, so I'm going to get one, one, and one, two. And four, so I'm going to get four. Now, this would be good. Now, again, I challenge you. Um, this would be kind of the bare minimum to, uh, you'd have to, obviously go and meet all of the intent of the assignment uh, above and beyond what we're doing right here and, and I want you guys to use looping instructions however I challenge you to look at uh, look at some of the other options available to you use the formula node using uh, uh, anything that can uh, significantly uh, reduce the amount of code here make it a little more efficient um, this is you know this would be 100 percent if this is all I was asking you to do and I know for a fact uh, this isn't all we're asking to do. But one of the things to note here is when you go to run, you're running. You don't have to go to run continuous. And if you ever want to stop, you have built in the controlled stop rather than the uh, rather than hitting the stop up in the toolbar up there. Um, so we have a lot better control over what we're doing. Now, um, I want you to work on that homework for for uh, next week. It's not due till Wednesday. However, um, we will talk about some uh, questions that you guys may have on Monday. Uh, so make sure you get some questions and take a hard look at that over the weekend. Thank you.